You're listening to episode 30 of A Whole New You podcast. Today's show is the third and last of the encore episodes that we're airing while Kim is in the middle of moving. We chose this boosting immunity episode to re-air since kids will be heading back to school before too long and back into confined and often germ-infested classrooms. It's a great time to reinvigorate our immune systems prior to a new school year. Today you'll learn about foods and lifestyle practices that can help support our bodies and increase our resilience to viruses and illness. We also want to thank you for being here and for sticking with us during these weeks of Encore episodes. We hope that you will subscribe to our show on iTunes so that you won't miss the next new episode when it airs. And if you wouldn't mind taking time to leave us a review, we would greatly appreciate it so that others can find our show as well. Without further ado, let's get to the episode on boosting immunity. Welcome to A Whole New You podcast. I'm your co-host, Kim Maravich. I'm a registered nurse and author of the book, 360 Health. I'm joined by my dear friend, Lori Biddle, a health and wellness coach certified through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Our show exists to inspire and empower women to take charge of their health with weekly tips and conversation about self-care, mindset, nutrition, fitness, and clean living. Please keep in mind that the material provided in this podcast is intended as general information only and should not be used as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. We're thrilled to have you here. Let's get to the show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of A Whole New You Podcast. Lori and I were just sitting down to record, and she surprised me with some delicious, gluten-free, dairy-free gobs, I guess you would call them, and they had like a raspberry filling. They were so delicious, so she's so sweet. My birthday was yesterday, and I turned 44, so hard for me to believe because, you know, Lori and I have known each other since high school, and it kind of seems like yesterday in some ways, and now we're in our 40s. Um, but I really feel like I finally have come into myself. You know, this is the decade where uh, I don't really care as much about maybe how I look. Of course, I care how I look, but I'm not obsessed with it. I'm not obsessed with my weight. I'm not obsessed with the way I look. I just feel like, you know, in this decade, I kind of want to be here to serve others, to be a part of... uh, raising my kids and helping them to be better people and you know all those insecurities of the teenage years and the 20-somethings not knowing where you are in this world those have all kind of gone away and I just feel like this is a really good decade to embrace what do you think Lori yeah I think the word that comes to mind for me when I think of 40s so far which I'm 42 Um, And you probably have heard me mention multiple times, you know, throughout other episodes that I've kind of been on this journey for two years. So it was kind of my 40th birthday that prompted all of these changes in my life. But, you know, the word back to that, the word that comes to mind when I think of where I'm at here in 40s is acceptance. You know, and I wish I could go back and talk to my 30 year old self and just give me a good shake and say, stop the madness, Mm -hmm. because You know, when you have that grace for yourself and you start to accept and appreciate yourself for what you are, it just changes everything. You know, so I look back to like my 20s, which were a super fun time, but it's also a period of always trying to prove yourself. um, And and that needs to happen. I'm not saying that you, you know, you got to work hard and you do kind of have to pay your dues. I'm I'm all for that. Um, But then 30, I just... Those years, I just took it to a whole nother level. Like my kids were young. So it was like this out in the world every day, proving, 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 not only at my job, but, you know, with motherhood and it just all gets to be too much. Um, So 40s has brought for me a huge realization of I'm enough. What I'm doing is enough. What I have is enough. And I just had you know, so much more happiness and joy in my life with, with realizing that. So I love forties. I do too, Lori. And I, I love that, that, that you say that we are enough because I think we struggle with that. And, you know, I think, you know, even though I, I, I feel a much better place, sometimes we can still get caught in that comparison trap. I know, you know, just looking at Instagram and seeing all these gorgeous photos and people, 
you know, doing amazing things. And I think, you know, do I stand up? But when I take a moment to reflect, I do. We, we each bring our own gifts to this world and we can be a light to this world in whatever way we choose to be. And just by being our authentic selves. And I think that's really the thing is when you have reached this decade, you really can be your authentic self and embrace it. So I think that's, that's, a, that's a pretty cool thing. So I'm, I'm happy to be 44. <laughs> so uh, today we're going to be talking about ways to boost our immunity. And I think we need to give a little bit of background information. So Lori is going to just share a little bit about... Um, you know, what to do when we are really feeling sick and how to approach that. Yeah, so we've got so much good content for you today, you know, on lifestyle practices and food and vitamins and essential oils and all the things that help support your body um, to avoid getting sick. But the reality is, you know, there's sickness that sets in and, you know, working in corporate for as many years as I did, uh, you know, and I'm very guilty of this myself for many years, just kind of medicating and going on, you know, medicating and pushing through, you know, everyone shows up to work sick, like it's a badge of honor that, you know, you you're so tough, and you're gonna just keep keep pushing through and keep grinding it out. And you don't have time to be sick. And, You know, this is our culture now, and that's kind of, unfortunately, the expectation. So we are the only ones who are going to take care of ourselves. And and you have to just stop and and respect your body and and accept that you're sick. You know, I go back to 40s are are kind of (laughs) the season of acceptance. Um, You know, we need to bring that into no matter what age you are, you know, just kind of shifting perspective a little bit. And I just want to spend a couple minutes on perspective and that it's okay to be sick and it's okay to stop and slow down. And that is what your body needs. Now, that being said, we all have responsibilities. I know unless you're deathly ill, we can't all take to our beds, you know, for weeks at a time. Um, That's great if you can, and I highly recommend it if it's at all possible. But that's not realistic for everybody. Uh, But it's about kind of finding those pockets of time, you know, maybe going to bed an hour earlier, you know, and maybe just finding every little shortcut you can in your day-to-day life to to find those moments that you can take care of yourself and just slow down and allow yourself to to feel sick instead of just taking the medication and masking it and and keep wearing down your body like drink that delicious you know chicken broth and find find those pockets of time to just acknowledge that you're sick and take care of yourself because as mothers there might not be anyone taking care of you (laughs) and that's okay you got to take care of yourself just like you would take care of your children or your husband or anyone else in your life that was sick prioritize yourself that way too absolutely because I think as as moms we put everybody else first um, and then when we get worn down the whole house falls apart so we have to support ourselves so it is important that if you are sick that you take time to rest But let's also talk about some ways that we can maybe boost our immunity and our immune systems to make them stronger so that maybe we're not as susceptible to getting sick. We can't avoid it all, but we can do a lot to to help ourselves on the front end. So some things we talked about in previous episodes were uh, ways to detoxify our bodies. And anything that we can do to get rid of some of those toxins um, will be really helpful in just prepping your body. So... I think that was, Lori, was it episode one that we talked about? Uh, Not the introductory episode, but episode, or episode two. Yeah, so I know the first um, detox episode we did go into a lot of practices to detox your body. Now, last episode, we talked in detail about hand washing. Oh, right. And um, so that one is obviously factors into this, Mm -hmm. but probably won't spend a whole lot of time on it because it just a lot of these will mention in passing if they're things that we touched on before so right right okay right so detoxifying hand washing yeah we did talk about that's it's kind of um you know a no-brainer but it is something that we kind of skimp on you just want to spend a little bit more time washing your hands because so many of those germs are on our hands and we touch our faces and our noses and uh we can get really really sick that way 
We also discussed sleep in previous episodes, but just to remind you, our bodies do rejuvenate when we sleep and our immune systems work on circadian rhythms as well. So if we are not sleeping, then our bodies can't perform their jobs as well to detoxify and to get rid of those uh, bad bacteria. So the immune systems can get thrown off if we're not abiding by our circadian rhythms and getting enough sleep. So it's really, really, really important. And also, as Lori mentioned, if you are sick already, it's important to get even more sleep. Another thing, especially this time of year, is to try to decrease stress as much as possible. Because when we can decrease stress, that'll stabilize our cortisol levels, can control cravings. You know, when we're getting too much sugar or we're having cravings for sugar, that decreases our immunity. And if we don't have as much stress, then we won't have as much inflammation too. Too much stress reduces our immune system functioning. So just doing things like deep breathing, meditation, uh, any kind of self-care will help uh, to reduce stress. Say no more. Say no to things that you don't need to do. If uh, you're not really feeling up for going out with friends and it's going to be stressful to get the kids wherever they need to go and X, Y, and Z, then, then just say no. You don't have to take on every obligation uh, that people throw your way. It is okay to say no, and we're giving you permission today to do that. Another thing that really, really helps to boost immunity is to exercise. Um, exercise has been shown to mobilize T cells, which are immune system cells, part of the white blood cells. Uh, exercise can decrease respiratory infections. That's been shown in studies. And also, when you're exercising and sweating, we talked about this in another episode too, that helps to remove toxins from our body. Also, exercise helps to promote lymphatic flow. So we're circulating those white blood cells. It's just doing a host of good for us. And also, it can help to decrease stress. When you, if you're feeling stressed, if you can go for you know, a long walk or jog, um, it just takes your mind off of the stress that's, that's in front of you. And also, just getting some deep breaths like that, that'll really help to reduce those cortisol levels, reduce your blood pressure. It's good for you. Socialization, I just said you can, you can say no to some obligations, but on the other hand, it is good to get out with friends and to socialize. Laughter really is the best medicine, and studies have shown that when you can laugh, it does a host of good to boost your immune system. So if you can't get out with friends, watch a funny movie. There's a lot of silly YouTube videos that you can watch. You know, just take time. I love to, now, this is a season in my life. My, I have really little boys, but I love to tickle them. And the laughter is so contagious. And we just end up, you know, in a puddle of tears from, from laughing so hard. But just anything you can do to laugh will really help to boost that immunity too. One thing that's really uh, interesting to me, and I'm just going to give you a little aside. Lori doesn't know I was going to talk about this, but um, we were going to talk about saunas. And I'm going to tell you a little story just because this is uh, kind of interesting and has something to do with my background. But I am 50% Finnish. My mom is 100% Finnish. And in Finland, almost every house has a sauna. And it might not be attached to the house. It can be like across the yard and they have like a sauna house. But it is a tradition um, in Finland, especially in the wintertime, that the whole family goes into the sauna. It becomes like an event. And, you know, they get sweaty. They have conversations and just do a lot of talking and bonding in the sauna. Get really, really hot. And um, Finland is known as the country of 100,000 lakes. And so there are lakes everywhere. And people either go and jump in the snow or go jump in freezing cold water and then go back to the sauna so it's just, it's, it's a way that they know to fortify their immune systems and detoxify that way. Uh, and it, as an interesting aside, uh, in Finland, one of the, of the main religions in Finland is Lutheran, which is what I am. And my dad is a, a so is Lori, <laughs> and my dad is a, a Lutheran bishop. And when he had his first call, it was to a Finnish Lutheran church, and in his parsonage in his house was a sauna and uh he, he thought that was really weird but that's part of the the Finnish tradition and as another funny aside that's where he met my mom so that was a, his very first call 
he met my mom. She was Finnish. And, uh, you know, so the, the rest is history with the, with the whole sauna experience. But um, saunas are, as I mentioned, they fortify the immune system. They can detoxify. We mentioned that in uh, previous episodes. But also, when you're in a sauna, it increases your body temperature, which, which helps to decrease viruses and bacteria. So lots of good things from doing that. I know um, the gym I belong to has a sauna. So if you know if you have a gym that has one, some people have infrared saunas that they you know have in their houses, which I would love to at some point do that. But just getting again, this all has to do with the sweating and how that purifies your body. And another, on the other hand, is cold exposure. And cold exposure can be various things. Some people have like a plunge pool and, or they'll go and jump in a freezing cold lake, like I mentioned in Finland. And there's something to be said about cold exposure. So what I've read that you could do in your home, now I'm going to tell you, I, I haven't done this because I just don't like cold, but <laughs> people will take a really hot shower and then end it with really, really cold water. And they, they say to work your way up. You can start with 30 seconds and work your way up to like a minute or even two minutes. But that cold exposure can help to fortify the immune system. It's getting your body prepped for extremes in temperature. And it just it does something to the white blood cells in your body. It's actually a myth that being in the cold, you know, we, we tell our kids sometimes, oh, you're going to get sick if you go out without, without a jacket. It's actually a myth that being in the cold will make you sick. Now, if you're out there for long periods of time, of course, that's not good for anybody because that can wear you down. But just if you're, you know, going in and out of somewhere and, and you're getting cold for a time and then heating back up, that's actually not a bad thing for immune system. I was looking at a study from the European Journal of Applied Psychology. And in the study, they concluded that Uh, stress-inducing stimuli, such as cold exposure, um, and repeated cold water immersions increased metabolic rate due to shivering, and it elevated concentrations of catecholamines, and those activate the immune system. So there have actually been studies that have shown that that's not a bad thing, and that's good for you. So if you are brave and you want to get your body prepped, then try that. Try to take a, a hot shower and then end it with cold temperatures. And people swear by it. They swear by it for the energy too. Wow, Kim, I've never tried that either. This is something new for me. I'll have to maybe give it a shot. We'll see. <laughs> something I wanted to touch on today that not everybody makes the connection um, with immunity is gut health. And, you know, sometimes we, you know, that's a big, big trendy thing right now. You keep hearing gut health. And a lot of people associate that with just digestion. You know, they think I don't have any digestive problems, so I must, you know, have awesome gut health. But, but the reality is the majority of the population is out of balance in their gut. And, and a lot of that's because, you know, in our conventional dairy and meats, we have traces of antibiotics and just kind of the overuse of antibiotics from doctors. I know... When my kids were little, um, that's what we did. Like before I knew the power of food and knew the power of essential oils and other ways that I could help my family within my home, we just ran to the doctors and we got an antibiotic all the time. Um, So that really does take a toll on the balance in your gut over time. And the gut really is the brain of the immune system. It's just really, really important in keeping you healthy. So, you know, it's just kind of taking a look at that. And you probably hear a lot about probiotics and, and they are very important. And that's why, just because we've had so much exposure um, and, and everything antibacterial, you know, that's, that's kind of all the hype, especially as moms. That's how we're taught to take care of our children, to pretty much disinfect them with Clorox wipes mm-hmm. and Purell, you know, all day long. And You know, I've actually found when I've backed off of those, you know, we talked in our detox episodes and reducing toxins in your home about using more natural cleaners and and how those chemicals are actually hurting your immune system. Meanwhile, as moms all this time, we're thinking we're, you know, sanitizing everything to be healthy. And and sometimes that can end up making us um, 
sicker really because you know we're overloading our bodies with these with these chemicals so you know a probiotic supplement is something that is great to start to rebuild that balance of good bacteria in the gut and and you do kind of want to look for one with a prebiotic because the prebiotic feeds that good bacteria so as you start to repopulate your gut with the good stuff you know you also want to feed it and have it be thriving and um, you know I did see this picture a few years ago of like bacteria that I for many years thought was my my enemy in this world you know and I I just have a little bit of a different perspective on those fuzzy little guys now um, because there definitely are good bacterias that we need in our life so um, you know a couple other ways that you can get that other than taking a supplement is fermented foods you know we all hear yogurt have live active cultures and you know, there are a lot of them in the grocery store that are loaded with, with sugar and, um, you know, there's a lot of goodness in there. So it's just kind of trying to balance that out. But some other fermented foods that maybe aren't as mainstream as yogurt um, also can have a lot of, lot of really great benefits and bringing that good bacteria into, into the belly. And one of them being kefir, which is a, a type of yogurt, but it is liquid and it's really great for adding to smoothies. It's one of my favorites because you know you just pour it in. I also do overnight oats with it where you just take your steel cut oats and then you cover them in kefir, put some fruit or some cinnamon in there and you put them in the fridge overnight and then you eat them cold in the morning and it's just a quick easy breakfast and you're getting all of those great good bacteria in there. And I also, while I was um, at IIN, they did a lesson on fermented foods. It was kind of a little demonstration, and I am by no means an expert in making my own fermented foods. However, I did some experimentation in my kitchen, and I have found one thing that I've really liked, and um, it's pickles. Mm. And they're really easy to make. My husband absolutely loves them, and they do have that good bacteria. Because, you know, I, I guess I made them in the summer was the last time I made them through, um, you know, we participated in a CSA. So I had some delicious cucumbers from the CSA. I had some fresh dill and mason jars. And pretty much all you need is some sea salt or some nice Himalayan salt and water to make a brine. And you just cover the cucumbers with that salted water mixture and you know i also add whole cloves which my husband will just pull those out and eat them whole along with the pickles which is kind of crazy but also really good for immunity since we're on that subject but um so yeah the pickles are super simple because all you need is salt and garlic and cucumbers and some dill and you put them in a mason jar and you know seal the lid real tight and you leave them out for about three to six days, and then they're good for about three months in the fridge. And you're getting all that good bacteria, and it's all you know fresh produce that you make it from. Um, so just a better option than pickles that you're finding on the shelves in the grocery store and giving you a little extra boost of good bacteria. Another one that I tried to make that kind of was a fail, I would say, is sauerkraut. Mm. Um, had some beautiful fresh cabbage and chopped that all up, but that's some stinky stuff. So <laughs> I could only let that brew on the counter for so long. And then I think I moved it to the basement and then I moved it to the garage. And then finally my husband was like, get this out of the house. It was awful. So, um, I'm sure there are better ways to do it, you know, um, to kind of hide that smell. I was just doing very small batches in mason jars and, it was really hard to find a good spot to uh, kind of let it brew, so to speak, because it, it does not have a very good scent. So that was sauerkraut, but that's something else you can try at home, I guess. Can I just jump in and just say, um, yeah, I've, I've actually never, she, Lori's quite the chef and I'm not, but uh, I have never tried to make them. But I think one thing we need to mention is that um, sauerkraut is good for you, but not the canned kind that you can get on the store shelves, because that has, has been usually pasteurized and the good bacteria is gone. Sometimes you can find refrigerated sauerkraut and refrigerated pickles, uh, and those would be better. Those might have better um, probiotics and bacteria in them. But the kind that is just like 
shelf stable and it's on a regular shelf that isn't refrigerated, those aren't going to have the good bacteria. Absolutely. And I am starting to see some of the sauerkraut on the shelves a little bit more. Um, in health food stores mm-hmm. and even like John Eagle and Walmart, I've seen it in maybe more of the health food section or in the refrigerated section like Kim mentioned. But the key also with that is not cooking it in a crock pot all day yeah. because you're also killing off some of that good bacteria. You know, when we all make our pork and sauerkraut on New Year's coming up here, right. um, you know, you're not always getting all that good bacteria benefit when you've when you've heated it up for a long time and you've kind of killed a lot of that off so even though pickles and sauerkraut can be really great fermented foods you know you're not always finding that in the grocery store but um, good things to know about and you can do some research on your own too if you want to experiment but the pickles are I have found to be kind of the easiest one and you do get a lot of benefit and they're fresh and fresh and yummy another thing that you it's kind of a, a big deal right now, and, and you probably hear a lot about bone broth, and we all know that chicken noodle soup is something that, you know, for years, everyone says, when you're sick, you know, have some chicken noodle soup. Well, bone broth takes it to a whole nother level because, and it's, I know I hear people talk about, like, chicken stock and chicken broth, and, and the difference with bone broth is that the bones are cooked for a really long time. So all of those great minerals that are in the bones are extracted into the broth. So you've got protein and you've got a lot of amino acids and just all those minerals that are in there, collagen being, you know, one of them, which is, you know, I've, he- I've heard bone broth being called the, uh, the fountain of youth. You know, it's very good for your joints and your skin and all of that stuff, but it's also so great for just giving all those immune cells a boost and, you can find reduced sodium um, bone broth kind of in a carton at the grocery store, and I buy that sometimes too. I add some carrots and some celery and some noodles, and my kids love it, and it's a great thing to put in thermoses, you know, this time of year for school lunches, and, um, you know, it just really helps kind of boost that immunity. There's so many health benefits, and it's actually one of those things that's really super easy to make at home. Um Something I tell my clients really early on, a lot of times when we're talking about meals, is roasting a chicken. That is like a really easy weeknight, you know, they, it's not a huge chicken, so it's not cooking like your Thanksgiving turkey forever mm-hmm. in, the, in the oven, you know, but you roast a turkey one, or excuse me, roast a chicken one night, and then you kind of save those bones, and in your crock pot, you fill it with water, you kind of just cover those bones with some water, and you put a little apple cider vinegar in there, which is going to help extract those minerals from the bones. And then here's the best part, and this I saw in um, in a demonstration in an IIN lecture, and I just thought it was so wonderful. You can throw a whole carrot in, you can throw a whole piece of celery, you can throw the whole onion without even taking the peel off of it and yeah because you strain it you know you're not um, so you're not chopping like a lot of times when you're making um, chicken noodle soup or something or a vegetable soup there's some chopping involved when you're making bone broth you just toss it all in some people use clippings from you know different vegetables and just kind of save them in a bag in their freezer till they're ready to make broth Um, and and so you just kind of let that all cook in there the, the key is leaving it on for a long period of time. I think the minimum is like eight hours, to, uh, 12 to 24 hours is, is great. If you are a crock pot person and you're comfortable kind of leaving it on, you know, um, again, that's kind of a personal preference thing. But the longer you can cook those bones, the more goodness you're going to get from it. And then you just, I usually just put mine in a big bowl and with a strainer in the bowl pour the whole pot into the strainer and then just lift it up and you're left with just just the broth and all of that onion and the carrot and the celery and the the bones are all you know just in the strainer and you can dispose of them so it's not hard to make and it's great to have around if you do try this I will tell you sometimes especially if you make a smaller batch it gels in the fridge 
Um, and it can look kind of gross, but that's what you want. If that happens, then get really excited because that means that you have got so much of that goodness out of those bones. So you, that's kind of what you, what you want to see. So bone broth is just wonderful for immunity and just a really good time of year, you know, in the winter here, especially to implement that. You can make a soup with it. You can saute vegetables with it. You can just sip it from a mug, you know, maybe in replacement of a caffeinated beverage because we all want the hot drink this time of year. And bone broth is a, is a really good thing to, to start incorporating into your day. Yeah, not too long ago, I bought a an organic chicken from, like a rotisserie chicken from Whole Foods. And yeah, we, we ate the meat off of it, and then I made a broth with it. And we didn't actually get every single piece of meat off the carcass. So I just, I you know, pulled it off. And you can actually turn that broth then into like a chicken noodle soup, like you were saying, or chicken soup. I, I do um, chicken and wild rice soup. But that broth is is so good. So you you can drink it straight, but you can make it into soups too. So I just think that's a it's a good use. So why put bones to waste? I mean, I've also ordered bones from um, the company I've gone through is Western Grass Fed Beef, and you can get some really really nice bones through that. And you can actually reuse them if they are like a chicken carcass. The bones are pretty tiny, pretty thin. So you probably just want to use that once. But some of the grass-fed beef bones that I've used, you can use it um, more than once, like two to three times for uh, bone broth. And the the company, I think, mentions that on their website. But that's it's pretty cool. It's just a a good way to get you know some decent broth with very few bones. It's a low low cost dinner for you. But just to get into that chicken soup again, there there actually are scientific studies that show that chicken soup. You know, your grandmother knew what she was doing. Your mom knew what she was doing when giving you chicken soup. They actually, the the soup actually does help with your neutrophils. It decreases the duration and the intensity of colds and flus. That's been studied, and it helps with, um, so what I read was that it inhibits the migration of white blood cells across the mucous membrane. So like when you're really, really congested and your white blood cells go to that area, they go to try to fight the infection. And the chicken soup can help the white blood cells to stay where that congestion is to kind of reduce the congestion that you have, like the snot in uh, in your nose and the cough that you're experiencing, those white blood cells. It promotes um, the white blood cells to help reduce the cold symptoms. So there, there actually is a lot of scientific proof behind that. Good stuff. Also, we also think about vitamin C rich foods. When you have a cold, vitamin C has been studied, and I am going to talk about vitamins in just a couple minutes, but just as a focus with foods, vitamin C is actually better at preventing illnesses. Now, it's not a bad thing to have vitamin C-rich foods once you are sick, but they're, they are really shown to help prevent you from getting sick. So we're talking about, of course, you think of citrus fruits, you know, like lemons and oranges and grapefruit. But many other fruits also contain vitamin C. You can't really go wrong with a lot of different fruits. Think of um, pineapples and papaya and kiwi. Colorful vegetables, especially those orange and red ones, like squash, bell peppers, pumpkin, those are rich in vitamin C, as are spinach, broccoli, sweet potatoes, tomatoes. So just really trying to up your produce is a very good thing in the wintertime. Again, we we often don't think about eating salads and cold smoothies in the wintertime, but making soups like Lori was mentioning, uh, those are those are really, really, really good uh, and, and easy ways to incorporate many more vegetables than, you know, you might not normally do. And roasting them is also a good thing. You know, you, who wants a, a cold, you know, chopped salad in the wintertime, but if you roast vegetables, they can be really savory and just make for a good side dish for with your meals. Also, there's a lot of truth to eating seasonally. You know, in the summertime, our bodies kind of crave really cold and fresh produce like watermelon and strawberries. Our gut microbiome actually shifts with the seasons. So there have been studies done with indigenous cultures that they could only eat certain things during certain times of the year. And it showed that their gut microbiome, excuse me, did shift. So... Our 
our, our guts actually crave, it's, it, they send signals to our brain to crave things like those cold fruits during the summertime. And then it, they shift. So right now, you know, I'm looking outside and there's snow. I'm not really thinking about watermelon so much right now because it's, it's, it's a chilly day and I want something warm. And so I am thinking about things like butternut s- squash soup and eating um, those clementines. I just bought a bag of clementines. So our gut microbiome actually will help to extract the nutrient density from a lot of those fruits and vegetables. So just, you know, when you're going to the, the grocer, look for seasonal produce and your body will thank you for doing that. Garlic is another one that we know to be a broad spectrum mi- antimicrobial agent and you can cook with it. I mean, you could eat it raw, but uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to eat raw garlic, but some people do. Uh, but cooking with it is a really good way to boost your immune system. Mushrooms are a big one, um, especially maitake, shiitake, reishi. Those mushrooms are known to be immunity boosters. And I mention mushrooms um, in my book that they've actually been studied um, in regard to cancer prevention as well. One company, and we are not um, sponsored by this company at all, but I like, always like to mention them, is Four Sigmatic. So it's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C. Four Sigmatic has, cause a lot of people don't like mushrooms, but Four Sigmatic has created mushroom blends of coffee and tea, uh, and I love them. And there are good ways to boost the immune system. Their website is uh, a multi- has a multitude of information about how mushrooms can help you. So if you're not um, into, you know, buying those things or drinking the tea, you can also look. I know Whole Foods definitely carries shiitake mushrooms, maitake mushrooms. You can look for those and recipes and ways to to get those into your diet. Manuka honey is another one that is an antiviral, antibacterial. Uh, we talk about adding spices to our dishes. Oregano is a really good one, but all of the spices. Uh, well, oregano has been studied um, in regard to decreasing um, the cold and to decreasing infections. But spices in general have a host of antioxidants and are very, very good for you. So it's just you can jazz up your dishes that way. Brazil nuts are one I think we talked about before. You can get your daily dose of selenium with Brazil nuts. They're also high in vitamin E. And both selenium and vitamin E, again, I'm going to be talking about vitamins in a minute, but they uh, can help to fortify your immune system. So getting some Brazil nuts in every day is a good way. Other things to include in your diet when you're trying to boost your immune system are oily fish like salmon, ginger, because it decreases inflammation. Herbal teas are good. Um, Anything warm is going to help, especially if you have like a sinus infection, a sore throat, Uh, those are good. Anything warm is good to try to clear those out, but it also can help in the, on the front end to decrease, to increase your immunity and just add to those the fortifying the herbal teas, just like spices can have a lot of benefit. So they have things like orange. Um, one of my favorites is like an orange cinnamon blend. I love that for the winter time. And that's really, really good for boosting immunity. Dandelion tea is another one. Green teas contain EGCG, which is an anti-inflammatory and an antioxidant. We've talked before about increasing our water intake. So especially if you're adding lemon to it, that the lemon helps with the detoxification process. But hydration is super important for all of our bodily functions. So um, to support every cell in your body and to make sure it's doing its job optimally, you want to make sure you're hydrated. We talked about hydration at length in previous episodes, but just making sure you're drinking half your body weight in ounces. A um, couple more things, pastured poultry. We talked about um, you know, pastured and organic poultry, and we talked about maybe getting a, an organic chicken carcass. It's so good for you because it's high in B6. Sunflower seeds are high in vitamin E as well as our, as our um, other, other nuts too. But just to, before we move on, one thing that you want to really be, so those are things to incorporate, but one thing you need to avoid if you're looking to not get sick and you're trying to decrease the incidence of colds and infections 
you really want to limit or avoid alcohol. Alcohol is a depressant, not only for our minds, but also for our immune systems. It can really, really wear us down. So trying to cut back on that. If you are sick, if you feel a sickness coming on, you really want to cut out the alcohol because it's going to uh, decrease the severity of the cold. And also sugars. Sugar, um, added sugars, or even products like a lot of processed foods, you really will be doing yourself a favor by cutting back on that because sugar leads to inflammation in our bodies. And any inflammation is just going to make it worse if we do get sick or increase our chances of, of getting sick. And all of these great foods that uh, Kim was talking about, you know, the cinnamon and the orange and the ginger and, you know, oregano, a lot of these are also available in the essential oil form. And I could talk for hours about essential oils and how they really do help the body. They support the body, you know, which is going to help support your immune system. And a lot of these things that we get in our foods, we can get from the oils. They are so super potent. We'd have to eat a lot of these foods to get the benefits that we can get in an essential oil. But, but that being said, um, you know, it really comes down to, to quality because there's a lot of oils out there on the market now and you know a lot of different stores are selling them and it's kind of a shame because some of them are giving essential oils a bad name because they're either heavily diluted or they're filled with synthetics and so you're not getting that therapeutic benefit that oils can give but if you are doing your research and you're working through a good company and, you, and you're finding out how the oils that you're using in your home are being sourced and um, you know just kind of doing your homework on that a little bit, they can be such powerful tools to help boost immunity. A lot of them have antiviral um, components and there's a whole science behind essential oils and all the constituents that make up one little bottle and again, I could, you know, spend an hours on the science behind all of that. But basically, you know, as far as this episode goes and talking about immunity in general, there are a couple oils that also relate back to some foods that Kim was talking about that you can start using in your home to, to really help keep your family healthy this cold and flu season. And oregano is a big one, cinnamon, clove, orange. Again, a lot of these foods that we mentioned, but the oil is, is a very potent um, form of, of these foods. And, you know, that being said, when, when we are using them, you can put them in a diffuser and just kind of inhaling them gives your body and your family a lot of ben- benefit as far as staying healthy. And we can also apply them topically. Now, like your cinnamon and your oregano, those are hot oils. And um, just in general, anytime when you're using essential oils with kids, it's great to use a carrier oil, which is also going to help dilute it because as we talked about, they're super potent. Um, But it's also going to make your oils last a little longer and um, just makes it really easy to apply. And my favorite place to apply oils is on the bottom of your feet because your feet are very porous and they will absorb all that goodness up into your body. So again, this time of year is a really good time to you know, use some coconut oil or even olive oil, um, any kind of you know, carrier oil that you have even just in your kitchen and mix with some high quality essential oil applied to the bottoms of your feet to just give your bodies that immunity boost and, and help get you through this uh, cold and flu season. Essential oils can be great tools for that. I love that. And I, before my kids, when my kids were little, the doctors would tell us to put uh, things on the bottom of their feet, and I never understood that, but now I get it that they have that your feet are porous. Okay, that that makes a lot of sense. Lori gave me a, a really nice oil blend for my son too, and he thinks it's ticklish when we put it on his feet, but that's that's fun. So just to to wrap up the show, we're going to talk about some vitamins that would be helpful. Again, we recommend getting most of them from food sources. So really, really, when you're upping your produce 
getting lots of fruits and vegetables in, you're going to get a lot of vitamins that way. But sometimes we do need some extra supplements. And of course, that is, we would rather use supplement on the front end than to take medication on, on the back end. You have to do what you have to do, but you can try to boost your immunity this way. So to start, it's recommended, especially in the winter time, to take a high quality multivitamin. That way you're covering kind of all bases and making sure that you're getting at least the trace nutrients in that, that you need to get. We can talk more in, in depth in a, a future episode, but I always recommend looking for a multivitamin that has the methylated forms of folic acid and B12. And again, we can talk about that later, but you want to look for a multivitamin that has methylfolate, uh, methylcobalamin, one that I often recommend to people just because it's easy, easy to find. You can get anything on Amazon, but if you're looking in a local store, um, Smarty Pants, they are gummy vitamins, but they contain the methylated forms of vitamins. That's just, you're gonna, your body will absorb them better. So just focus on taking a multivitamin first and foremost. The second one that I recommend all the time is that people take vitamin D. We are just notoriously, our whole culture is notoriously low in vitamin D because we, we get it from the sun, but we are an indoor world. We're an indoor nation. We're inside all the time, and especially in the winter. If you can get out in the sun in the winter, that's a great thing to do because even just a little exposure through your face or your hands is, is really helpful. But I take a, a, a vitamin D supplement every day. At getting adequate levels can lower the chance of getting the flu by 50%, it is, it is thought. So... I would recommend taking a vitamin D supplement, especially if you're not able to get outside at all in these winter months. Vitamin C we talked about earlier. It's a little bit better for prevention, um, but getting them through uh, fruits and citrus is great, but you might want to consider taking a vitamin C supplement as well. Vitamin E is an antioxidant. We can get those through nuts and seeds. But you, it's another thing that you can look into supplementing with. Zinc is one. I'm sure you've ho- heard of coldies um, or zinc lozenges. Zinc is helpful because it develops and activates the T cells. And if you're taking zinc, um, if you've already started to get sick, it can reduce the duration and severity of the common cold. So that's a good thing in the winter time. Selenium, we talked about Brazil nuts, but it's a good thing in Probably a lot of multivitamins are going to have that, as well as the vitamin E that I mentioned. But those are important because they're antioxidants. Another one that you could look into is ALA, or alpha-lipoic acid. It actually assists vitamin C and makes it work better. It's an anti-inflammatory, and it also improves the health of our mitochondria. Quercetin. um, Again, I've seen this in multivitamins. You might see it um, as a standalone supplement, but that's one that's interesting because it does have a lot of antioxidants and it stimulates the immune system to do its job. It has antiviral activities and can decrease inflammation in general. Another anti-inflammatory one that we mentioned in previous episodes is turmeric or turmeric curcumin. Um, That is one that I know of that has been studied in regard to cancer prevention, but it also rivals um, painkillers like Celebrex in because it is an anti-inflammatory agent. So that's a good thing. Anytime we can decrease inflammation, that makes us less susceptible to getting sick. I'm sure you've heard of echinacea. Echinacea can be like in a lozenge form. I've seen teas. It has it can be a standalone supplement. But people take it because it does have antiviral and antimicrobial activities. And one that I have never, and I don't know, Lori, if you have ever tried this, but elderberry, I've seen people drinking elderberry um, concoctions and teas, but elderberry can be a supplement, but it can also be something that you can drink. And it's been used for hundreds of years to fight colds and flus. It's high in antioxidants and can protect our cells from damage, Um, helps to activate the immune system. So I've seen that like on Instagram lately, people drinking um, elderberry tea. So it might be something I'm going to try to try to look into myself. So just to recap, we hope you have come away with some practical information on how to uh, boost your immune system and how to decrease the chances of getting sick or ways to help you if you are sick. Remember, you want to sleep as much as you can. You want to make good food choices, eat whole foods that are not processed 
increase your fruits and vegetables. You can add some essential oils. Diffusing them makes your house smell good, and it also is great for trying to prevent infections. Um, if you're, you know, make sure you're taking a multivitamin. You might consider supplementing with some other things. If you do get sick, try to start taking some zinc. Um, and these are all just practical tips that we have for you today on ways to decrease your chances of getting sick. Anything else you want to add, Laura? Just take care of you. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so for more from Kim, go to KimMarovich.com. For more from Lori, go to SimplyEmpoweredLLC.com. And if you want to join our Facebook group, our Facebook group is a whole new you podcast community. We'd love to see you there. And also, if you have any questions for us or topics you'd like us to consider for the show, you can email us at contact at a whole new you podcast.com. Have a great week. 